before I start this video, go ahead and make sure you watch it all the way to the end because I explain the flavors that are in the ramen as well as, you know, just some hint things at the end. So, see you guys in the intro. What's up everybody, it's Oak Uncle here, back with another video and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a simple bowl of ramen, a little soft boiled egg, little decorations on the side, and some nice noodles as well as broth. So, without further ado, let's get right into this. So first things first, you want to go ahead and boil up some water for your eggs, because that's the first thing you want to do. And while that's going, you're going to get a decent sized pot to start your broth. And then once you do that, once you got your water set aside for the eggs, you're going to go ahead and take your medium pot, put it on about medium high heat, let it warm up for a little bit. Then you're going to take a little bit of butter and put that in there. So I'm putting about that much butter because it depends on which broth you're doing. You can do more butter if you'd like to. And once that butter melts down, you're gonna go ahead and put up some chopped garlic. Not, don't use a garlic press, just chop up the garlic. It's better for this recipe. And if you want to, once the garlic pieces get nice golden brown, you can chop up some onion pieces and put that in there as well. But I'm just gonna be doing garlic for today. And while that's turning brown, you want to go ahead and turn it to a lower heat. That way when you put in the soy sauce, it'll burn just a little bit, but not too much, just to give you a little bit of flavor. Just like that, that's exactly what you want to hear. So once you get a decent layer of soy sauce, that should be plenty. You can go ahead and add spices and all the stuff you want. Okay, I just put salt pepper and as well as a salt pepper garlic mix that I have up here. Kinder's, I think link will be in the description where you can go to Whole Foods and Costco and get yourself some in the spice aisle. I'm pretty sure they'll have some, but I got that at Costco. Uh, once you got that all done, you're gonna put as much water in the pot as you want to your liking for how much broth you want. Okay, and this is gonna be a last one. That's plenty of broth. That's all I need, really. So, we can go ahead. That's just water that we added, so we can go ahead. Put that in there, it'll dry out. Okay, next what you wanna do is you wanna get yourself a non-stick pan. And since I don't wanna use any flavoring packets, uh, you can go ahead and if you have top ramen, you can use those flavoring packets and put in your broth. That'll do plenty of flavor. Or if you have like some sort of soy sauce blend like I do on some other packs, that's fine. But today I'm using ramen that has no flavoring packets. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my own flavoring. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our pan to medium low heat. That right there is about good. Let that warm up for just a little bit. In the meantime, go ahead, grab yourself a little bit of soy sauce. We don't need none since we have some in the broth already as well as whereas you can have a little bit of hot sauce if you like so spiciness is always nice and then you go ahead and grab yourself some sesame oil as well as a little bit of ginger or mushrooms or whatever okay so now i'm gonna go ahead and add this into the pan i'm just gonna add a little bit of soy sauce just to make you like a little flavor packet, your own mini flavor packet I'm gonna go ahead and add in some hot sauce as well that should be plenty. Um, go ahead and add some sesame oil. Boom, that should be plenty. Just eyeball this. And then maybe add a little bit more soy sauce just to mix a little bit. Now, while it heats up, for these kind of ingredients, sesame oil and soy sauce to mix, you have to have a higher heat sort of consistency. So you're gonna go ahead and take your whisk and, or something like that and go ahead and take this mixture, mix it up. Well, if you wanna add any more, stuff into it like the needle fix or some herbs and stuff to give it more flavor that's good but this is this should be good for now if you want you add a little pinch of sugar just barely anything so go ahead you got my pinch of sugar right there let's go ahead and add that in probably one more more pinch that's it just two little pinches that's all you want go ahead and sprinkle that in there and boom. Make sure while you're doing this, you have your egg pot set aside so it'll be ready to boil. Your broth can cook at whatever speed you want it to. Just make sure it's cooked 
and ready to go once you have your noodles all done. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix it up until it starts to look like this, until it starts looking like that. And then you're gonna let it get hot and steamy for a little bit. You're gonna mix for a little bit longer. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn this off so it doesn't crystallize. Boom. And now we're done with our little secret sauce. We can take this, dump it straight into our broth. Boom. Just like that, go ahead and clean your pan off. And you're done so your dad doesn't kill you. Boom, and now you are done with your flavoring. Go ahead, I forgot my whisk. Go ahead, take it, whisk up your broth a little bit, get it stirred up, you know, get that all good and going. Then we're gonna go ahead, add a top to it. And we're gonna let this sit while we do the rest of our stuff at medium low heat, just so it can get nice and warm. Not too hot, because we don't want it to boil. So actually low heat, low heat, okay? Now, since your egg water's been boiling while you've been doing this, it is definitely ready to go ahead and put eggs in there. So, a good time to do your eggs, which I do just so they're barely, like barely, and when I say barely, I mean barely, barely cooked and still have a little bit of yolk in them. You wanna do that for about seven minutes, and, while, and then you can set your egg off the side in an ice bath, which we'll talk about later, to make it, you know, a little bit more solid. Okay, I got these two eggs right here, these ramen eggs. You're gonna go ahead, because this is a very delicate process, take your tongs and just slowly wade them down into that water and let them settle at the bottom. Like that. And then you can go ahead and start your timer for seven minutes, that's all you need. And once those are done cooking, we're gonna plunge them into an ice bath. Boom, we got our ice bath ready, and these eggs are now boiling for seven minutes. And we can go ahead and check on our broth and stir that up a little bit to get the flavor kind of going. So once you've stirred up your ramen a little bit, you can go ahead, you can find this at like Whole Foods and stuff like that, or you don't have to add this, you can just add other flavors to make the broth just how you like it. But I'm gonna go ahead and add some dark aged miso. This stuff packs a punch in flavor, I'm telling you right now. So, depending on your broth, you're gonna add as much as you want. Since I don't have much broth as usual, I'm just gonna add a quarter of this into there. There we go. And that is all the miso we need right there. Go ahead and put that in the fridge so it doesn't spoil. Now you're gonna take whatever you use to stir it and just stir it up so it can mix into the broth and not solidate at the bottom at all. Cause that will not be doing, you don't want miso turds chilling in your broth. You wouldn't like that, trust me. So go ahead and do that. Now that broth is killer. I just tasted it. Mm -mm -mm, that is the best broth I've made so far. So now we're gonna take our attention on the eggs. I lied, sorry. We are not actually gonna turn our attention to the eggs. We're gonna turn our attention more to the topping. The eggs are toppings, but while they're cooking, you can go ahead and do this and get it out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and take green onions. You can use whatever toppings. You can use romaine lettuce, spinach, whatever, chop it up into nice little pieces to kind of decorate the top. And also give you some greenery if you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop up some green onions. By the way, if you're liking this video, go ahead down below, like the video, and if the subscribe button is still red, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well for more cooking content, vlogs, dirt bike content, all kinds of stuff like that. So once you got enough toppings for however many bowls you wanna serve, you can go ahead and grab yourself some seaweed, or if you don't want that, you can do different toppings, but I'm gonna do seaweed. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead and take your pieces of seaweed right here, cut them in a little designs, what you want, you know, just to make it a little more interesting. Go ahead, boom, I got that done right there. Okay, now we're gonna turn our attention towards the eggs. Right as you're getting to about 10 seconds, we're gonna go ahead, turn the heat, down to low for eggs because we're gonna keep this water and use it to boil our noodles separately. That way they don't get all mushy in the broth. We just have the broth left to the side and use it and make new noodles whenever you want a new bowl of ramen. It's way easier, trust me. So now we're gonna go ahead, take these out, plunge them in our ice baths to halt the cooking process. Okay, now we got our eggs in the ice bath. We're gonna let these sit while we do our noodles. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead, grab however many bowls for however many people you have. And once you cook, your ramen noodles, you're gonna go ahead and put them straight into this bowl and then you can add broth and toppings at the end. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and take this ramen. I got nice organic rice ramen right here. Just, you know, just the ramen noodles. No, where's the, yeah, there you go. No flavor packets or anything. Once you got your ramen, you're gonna turn this back up to high heat. We're gonna cook one at a time, transfer one, transfer one, transfer, okay? And I'm using two bowls because I don't have to cook all the noodles at once and do that for my dad. So we're gonna plop one in. Once that's done cooking, bowl. Done cooking, bowl. Bam. While our, ramen, while our ramen is cooking, we're gonna go ahead and take our attention towards our eggs. Crack them on the counter, just like that. And then use the camera. Crack them on the counter, just like that. So you got that nice little area. You can start peeling your eggs above your ice bath and then once you're done peeling you can peel dunk just to make it easier peel right dunk i think i undercooked these so if you undercook them they're a little squishy you can just leave them in the ice bath and until you assemble your bowl and you can cook them or cut them right before you go into the bowl that way the cold water actually kind of slows down the eggs as well and makes it not as liquidy because we don't want it too liquidy i kind of messed up on peeling this but you want to get a, a perfect egg you know and do that and we're going to go ahead and peel our other one okay since those are a little undercooked well they're not really undercooked it's just i didn't get enough cooking time to get the outside they're cooked fine in the inside so they're not really undercooked but they're technically still undercooked so what if they're undercooked you can go ahead and leave them in the ice bath until, and you can take them out once you're ready to assemble your, your bowl. But for now, just leave them in there. Or if not, you can take them out right away and cut them and get it ready to assemble your bowl. But for now, I'm just going to assemble one bowl and only cook one thing of noodles. Because it's just me. My dad's not going to come home till later. So I'm going to cover up all this stuff for him. But we're going to go ahead and take our noodles now and put it in our bowl right now. Once our ramen noodles are done cooking, we're just going to go ahead and take them put them straight into our bowl right here so we can put the broth in and then all the toppings all right just like that put all the noodles in the bowl boom and save your water if you want to make more um ramen which i'm gonna do later make sure your stove is off okay once we got that now we're gonna add the broth into the bowl so i'm gonna go ahead and do that okay once you got your broth in get it about to right there and have a little noodles poking out so you can add your toppings and they won't float away too much. Uh, go ahead, add your green onions in there, as well as your seaweed. Then here comes probably the most crucial part of the ramen, the eggs. Leave a little spot for them right there. So I just added my ramen egg. I'm gonna go ahead and just put a dash of salt on them, as well as a little bit of pepper, just to get some flavoring, and boom. Your ramen bowl is now ready to eat. Now we're gonna eat our ramen. So I got my ramen bowl right here. All nice and beautiful, ready to eat. Um, you can say a prayer if you want to, blah, blah, blah. I'm just gonna go ahead and eat because I'm not really religious or anything. So let's go ahead and eat our delicious bowl of ramen. I, I like to start with an egg. Take a half a bite out of that, eat half of that, and then take some noodles with it. Mmm! These noodles are a lot better than noodles I was using before. They're more chewy, like more ramen noodles. They're actually rice ramen, or rice noodles. Really good, by the way. I cannot explain to you how good this ramen tastes, as well as the broth. Packs a decent punch, so let's go ahead and get a decent taste of the broth here. The broth tastes like traditional miso broth because of our miso flavor, as well as our own little flavor packet that we add in there, homemade. That's probably one of the best parts that made this broth the way it is. It's got light miso flavor with the dark punch of hotness and other pepper and salt and stuff like that. It's really good, as well as the crunch from the green onions, nice greenness from this egg, and a nice chewiness of these noodles. Everything just really comes together and make this amazing ramen bowl. One more thing that I noticed is when I drink this broth, I got all that flavors, like I said, that smooth, light miso with that darker, robust taste from the darker part of the miso, the aged part. 
kick in the back of your throat from that hot sauce. And what I didn't show is I did put hot sauce in that little flavor packet we made homemade in that nonstick pan, but I added more hot sauce into the broth while I was cooking because I wanted to give it a little more kick in the back of your throat. And oh boy, definitely the best broth I've made. And that is our bowl of ramen done. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned a new cooking technique and a new cooking recipe for you to make for your whole family, surprise them. Um, if you do make this and put it on TikTok, you can tag me, my at is at LukeTheKunkel17, it'll be up on screen right now. And same thing with Instagram, I'll have that up on the screen. And if you do a TikTok, mention me in your comment section, or um, YouTube, men mention me in your comment section and I will get to you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video and I hope you learned a new recipe that you can go and show your family. Enjoy your food.